When you're upgrading from a mechanical drive over to an SSD, you're getting much more performance, less heat, less power consumption, and less chance for failure. So in this video, I'm gonna show you not only how to physically change your mechanical hard drive in your laptop to an SSD, but I'm also going to show you how to clone that data. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So I know we all want to update as soon as possible, but we need to know a few things before we do that. First off, we need to find out if we're under MBR or GPT. MBR is the older style. When Windows 7 came along, we started updating to GPT drives. GPT drives allows for drives over two terabytes, allows for a quicker startup, and allows for over 128 partitions where MBR allowed only four. Anyway, aside from that, there's also UEFI. UEFI helps a lot of those aspects, allows for more compatibility with video cards as well, also booting up quicker. But aside from that, we'll right click on the start button, then we'll go to device manager. Under device manager, we'll open up disk drives and we'll right click on our drive. In this case, we have a hard drive. And then also we have this here. This is our card reader on the laptop. So on the hard drive, we'll right click on that and go to properties. Then we'll select volumes and then we'll click populate. This will take a few seconds. So here we can see we're under MBR, master boot record. Again, that boots a little bit slower, but now we need to find out if our BIOS supports UEFI. So let's go ahead, close that up here. And we're going to boot into our BIOS. I'm recording with the camera as well as a screen recorder because under MBR, you can't record in the BIOS. So one sec. Okay, so in the BIOS, we'll come over to the boot section. And mind you, this could be different on every single laptop, so you may have to look around a little bit. So first off, the big flag here is boot list. It reads legacy, where it should read UEFI. So if we click here, we can select UEFI, and we're not going to make these changes just yet. So I'm gonna click yes, but we're not going to save. And then here under UEFI boot along the top, we'll make sure we can see a Windows boot manager, but we'll get back to that in one sec. Under legacy boot, here we have the boot options. Hard disk would be boot option number one. But again, we first have to switch to GPT within Windows, and then we can play here. So I'm going to go back and disable UEFI so that we can boot back into regular Windows and legacy boot, hard disk, and now F10 to save and exit, and yes. So one minute and 52 seconds to boot into Windows. That's a long time. And mind you, you'll take a few seconds off here and a few seconds there. You'll take off and from a clean shutdown to a startup, that takes a little less than a restart. But still, two minutes, that's a long time. So let's go ahead and close out of Boot Racer. Boot Racer is what I use to test the boot speeds. That is the professional version. I'll have links down below. In order to change from MBR to GPT, we'll hold down the left shift key. Then we'll right click on the start button. We'll hover over shutdown or sign out. And then we'll click restart. Still holding on to the left shift key. Okay, now on this screen, we can let go of the left shift key and then we'll select troubleshoot. Then we'll select advanced options and then we'll select command prompt. Now on this portion, we'll select our Windows credentials and press enter there. Then our password, if we have one, so I thought I didn't, but I guess I do, so one sec. Okay, so then here, what we're going to be doing is converting your MBR partition to GPT. During a conversion or a migration, there's always a chance that you're going to lose data. Now you're watching me doing this live and it worked for me perfectly well and chances are it's going to work for you perfectly well as well, but there is also that possibility anytime of data loss, so just be careful. So then here we'll type MBR to GPT space forward slash validate and then we'll type MBR to GPT space forward slash convert this will take a few seconds, so one sec. Okay, and now don't freak out because it says error and all that stuff, that's normal. So here we'll type in exit, and then we'll select turn off your PC. 
Now, once the PC is off, we'll go ahead and turn it back on and then we'll start tapping F2 or delete or whatever key it is to enter your BIOS. All right, now we're back in the BIOS. I should have mentioned this before. It is important for you to update your BIOS to the very latest version. That way it could release the UEFI version if you didn't have it before. Now we'll go back into boot. Then we'll select boot list options. We'll press enter there. We'll select UEFI. Then we'll select yes. Under UEFI boot, we'll come here and then we'll select HDD1 Windows Boot Manager. And then we'll hit escape and then we'll hit F10 to save and exit and yes. All right, so that boot up took a little bit longer because we were doing all the migration and all the converting and everything. So it is to be expected. So we'll go ahead and close out of here. Now let's go ahead, right click on the start button just to verify. We'll go into device manager. Then we'll go to disk drives. We'll right click on WDC properties volumes and then click populate so now we've gone from mbr to gpt and uefi we have the basis for faster boot times better operations and all around smoother os but we're still on a mechanical drive and that is our kryptonite so now we need to update to an ssd how are we going to do that from a laptop let me show you real quick Okay, so closing out of all this, we'll open up Chrome or whichever browser you prefer. And then we'll go to diskgenius.com. To me, this is a new program a buddy Antonio just told me about, giving it a try with you guys live. And then we'll just open up the EXE and we'll install it real quick. Very important information, read through it. Next and next. And I'll have links to all of this down below and launch this genius so along with this genius we will also need a disk cloner because well this laptop only has space for one drive some has space for two drives if you did you just pop it in okay so i already have the cloner plugged in right over here here's my capture card and the hdmi as well so i'm just going to go ahead and plug this in i'll have links to this cloner down below it is from our friends at sabrent here we can see that WD blue drive, that brand new drive. So now what we'll do is we'll select the Western digital drive. And by the way, I selected the Western digital drive, which is the drive that has windows and everything on it. Don't select a partition because the clone won't work. Select the drive, then select tools, then select clone disc. Incredibly important not clone partition you want to select clone disk okay then here please select source disk that's going to be our c drive then we'll select okay if you want to migrate current system to target disk and make the disk bootable it is recommended to use system migration function do you want to migrate the system now yes yes i do so then on select target disk, if there were more disks here, it would show it. You'd want to select the one that has free or if it's a drive that you know that you want to write over, you would select that drive and then we'll click OK. So then here it's telling us this is our source disk. This is where the data is coming from. And this is our target disk where the data is going. Notice that this drive is one terabyte or 930 gigs, while this one is 465 gigabytes, not even a terabyte yet. So we're going to go ahead and click start. Realize you're cloning from a slow disk over to a much faster disk. So it's going to be pulling the information from here, reading it and writing it to the faster drive. That means this data transfer is going to be kind of slow. It might take some time. SSD to SSD will be a lot faster. M.2 SSD to M.2 SSD could be even more potentially faster. So just remember, this might take a minute. All files and partitions on the target disk will be overwritten, which the target disk is blank. In my case, in your case, just make sure that target disk is a disk you don't mind erasing because you will erase it and click OK. 
Now this is kind of important. If you want it to go faster, you're going to reboot to WinPE. That's the Windows pre-installation environment. Or we can do a hot migration. The hot migration is going to take a snapshot of your running OS and then copy that over to the new drive. To make it a perfect clone, we'll do reboot to WinPE. And now it's creating that Windows PE environment. So one second, computer will restart now, close other applications. That way you don't lose your work, okay? Okay, so now we're in WinPE mode. It's going to look very similar to Windows 10. And this is going to make it take a little less time to clone. Here it says remain in an estimate of 17 minutes. That's not too bad, but this is a clean install, 20 minutes. So it might go up from there. So we'll come back. All right, so now that we're done with a clone and we'll just go into File Explorer, then we'll go to this PC. And now we can kind of see two of the same drives. Mind you, this one is 500 gigs. This one is a terabyte. Aside from that, they're the same disk. So now we're going to go ahead and shut down the computer. And now we're going to replace the drive. So one sec. Just remember, this is an older laptop my boss gave me. So it is old, just disconnecting power from it. We are going to be working inside of it and I'll be taking the drive out of the cloner. We're done with it. I'm just setting aside for right now. And I'll be using my screwdriver to just remove all the screws. So one sec, just make sure you set these aside somewhere properly. That way you don't lose them and you don't forget where they go. And just remember all laptops are different. So for this one it comes off pretty easily. So now this is where our hard drive is. So we'll just take off all the screws needed. Now with that out of the way, we'll lift the drive or the cage. All right, so yeah, we can see this is an old mechanical drive. Here's where the spinning platter would be. And now we'll just pop this one in. And so there is the SATA data, the SATA power, SATA data and SATA power. So we'll just connect that there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and put this back down here over the drive. And then we should be able to properly situate it since this is where it came from. Now there will be certain instances where your drive is too thick. You need to find out if the drive that came from it is 1.8 millimeters or 2.5 millimeters. This is 2.5. So thankfully they're both the same size. And now I'm just going to screw in all those screws we removed. And now we'll just put on the top again or the bottom, should I say? Now this is the first reboot after a clone. The new drive is in, this is the old drive and we'll see just how long it takes to boot. Now mind you, it's the first boot so it might take a little bit longer than all subsequent boots but just wanted to show you what it would be starting up. Forty-nine seconds, if you remember how long it took before now it's 49 seconds that is impressive especially on a cold boot so that is awesome now let's do a restart see how long that takes restart before took almost three minutes maybe it was two minutes i don't remember but we'll see what it says here 
and the reason it does that is because programs are loading and unloading so almost done and then it'll go back to 10 so look at that 48 seconds on a restart as well before it took either two minutes or three minutes almost three minutes 48 seconds that's impressive and that's just replacing an ssd now if we come over here under file explorer and this pc we can see we're at 500 gigs which is perfect that's what the drive was this genius did a great job and for now it's still free but aside from this genius let's see what crystal disk shows comparatively one sec <clears throat> so here we can see with the ssd we're at 530.35 megs per second on read and 468.80 megs per second off of write. Now, jumping back to the mechanical drive, we can see we're at 131.12 megs per second on read and 118.58 megs per second off of write. The performance difference is almost five times that of the mechanical drive on the SSD. And that's amazing. And chances are right now it's even cheaper. So you really can't go wrong. So yeah, there is a ton of reasons why it's awesome moving from a mechanical drive over to an SSD. So less power consumption. Yeah, there's no moving parts in an SSD, so it's going to consume less power. Because there are no moving parts, no noise. Then also because there is no moving parts, less heat. Less heat means less power consumption. So less power consumption means more battery life. The fact that there are no moving parts means that you can move your laptop around a lot more and without a risk of you damaging that physical disc and ssds are a lot cheaper than they've ever been so now's the best time to update and let's not forget about speed typically five times faster than a mechanical drive this is your friend iggy with this bites for you showing you why it's awesome to update from a mechanical drive to an ssd iggy with this bites for you out see you guys